Hi, my name is Ashley Allen. I'm the CEO at IT Equality, and today I'm going to be walking you through building product bundles as well as product rules, not price rules. I always say price rules. In the last video, I said price rules, and I didn't mean to say price rules. I meant to say product rules. Um, so I get the wording confused sometimes, product rules. All right. So in the other videos you've seen, we have this bundle right here. Um, our bundle can be structured and restructured and viewed in different ways in this whole quote editor area. So let's go ahead and duplicate our tab and take a look at the package settings. So we're going to navigate over to setup and just take a look at some of those um, CPQ package settings, especially around the way that bundles show up. So next to this manage package, we'll click on configure. And from here, I always have to tab through each one because no matter how many times I look at this, I, I never actually memorize all of it. All right, so it's not groups. We can play with that in another video line editor, keep bundles together, preserve bundle structure. I think it's visualize. Yeah, this one. If you click on visualize product hierarchy, that will let you see. Um, so let's just save this. It'll let you see the products indented. And let's see if this works really, really fast or if it works, if I have to exit the page and then come back. I'm just thinking about it. Oh, yeah, so here we go. This is the bundle, and here these are indented, and these are under that bundle umbrella. Um, so that's one way that we can change the way that we look at our bundles, just to make it really obvious that this is part of a bundle. And then they're also collapsible. Sometimes they're collapsible. Just kidding. Um, sometimes you can collapse bundles based on the settings that you have. So another area, I think it's under maybe additional settings. Multiple bundles view. All right, so we've got wizard and we've got classic. We only have one bundle, so maybe that was it. Um, but this will show you a different visualization as well. Um, Let's just try classic and see what happens. Save that. All right, so now let's go ahead and add another product here and see if we have two bundles, even if they're two of the same bundles. Um, let's see what that visualization. All right, so we've got bundle one and we've got bundle two. All right. Maybe if I cancel out of here and then I go back in, it might change based on classic versus wizard. Um, so we can play with that in a minute or two. Um, for now, let's take a look at these options that we have under here. So we, we have a bundle, um, but how was this configured? Let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold down the command key and click on products so that I can pop open a new tab. So here's our product bundle. And our pricing is just regular um, list pricing right now. So we haven't played with the pricing yet, but we will. And under our related, we have different options. So this is where those products are coming from the SLA silver and SLA platinum. I'm just using the products that came out of the box with the dev org to save time. Um, so if we wanted to add another option, let's take a look. If I click on new, we have a new product option. It knows that I was on the test product bundle, so that's our configured SKU. The optional SKU, let's see if we can add another SLA. All right, we have silver and platinum, but we don't have bronze, so let's add that. We don't have any feature associated with this right now, 
Type is component, but we could also have this be accessory or related product, and each one of these has their own different sort of quirks. Um, so we can read through the help text. I'm just going to leave this as a component for now. Um, unless accessory looks interesting, in which case maybe we'll try... Yeah, no, we'll leave it as component. Um, so the display order, the other ones are one and two, so I'll make this be third in the list. The quantity, um, so we can have this quantity initialized, let's set it to five because none of the other ones default to five. If we want the quantity to be editable, we have the ability to control this. So we can lock the quantity so that a salesperson, while they may be able to discount it, they will not be able to change the quantity. The other ones are quantity editable. Um, so let's make this one not quantity editable. Um, we'll have it be selected automatically and required. Required means you cannot unselect it. We already have one of those, so we won't do that. No minimum or maximum quantity because we're defaulting it to five and we're making the quantity not editable. Otherwise, we could give it an upper and lower bound. If there was a specific discount schedule, we can have a discount schedule for this. We're going to make a discount schedule, but this one's not going to have a discount schedule. We can give it a default discount percent. So since you're purchasing this as a bundle, let's give them a 5% discount on this one. The other one has a 10% discount and you'll see that bundled. Select the checkbox to indicate the related product is bundled with the main product. Bundled options have a fixed quantity and zero price as the price is included in the main product. Leave this unchecked if the price should be added to the option. All right, so this allows you to have the cost included in the main bundle cost. So it shows up as zero, um, kind of like a freebie, I guess, but I suppose let's go ahead and check that. So this will just be free and then we can see what it looks like. All right. Now that we've saved all of that, let's go ahead and add this to a quote that we have not added anything to yet. So here's a bunch of $0 quotes. I'm just gonna pick on one of these. All right, and fingers crossed that the price book is correct and the account settings are correct. And you know, let's just hope I didn't pick a bad example because sometimes, you know, when you're not making fresh data, you pull some old data that doesn't meet the new requirements anymore. So let's just hope that this is going to work out. So we'll add a product. We're going to add our test product bundle. Select that. All right, so this is indented. Um, that looks good. We've got our bronze. It's got five. Price is included, so it shows up as zero. Um, very cool. So the discounting was totally irrelevant because we had the price be already included. This line has a 10% discount. So while the list unit price is 40,000, the net unit price is 36,000 because there's a 10% discount there. Um, so this is one way that you can configure your bundle. Let's take a look at product rules. Right now, I have a product rule that says, if I discount beyond 20%, it's going to give me an error. So let me click on quick save, and there we go. I have discount cannot exceed 20%. Also, while I was tinkering with this, I found out that you have to actually close the error and then change your amount to be a good amount and then save it Otherwise, the error is just going to hang out on the screen forever. But what if we wanted to have an error that we could just bypass? Let's take a look at our product rule, not our price rule, to see how we could change this. All right. So I'm going to rename my product rule because I was just putting in a bunch of garbage.
while I was testing. And this is a validation type. Um, we could have it be an alert. And if it's an alert, it's going to let us bypass. If we forget, um, we can always hover over the help text and that will clue us in. So let's change our punctuation on our message. All right, we're gonna save that. Looks much better now. Let's go back to our line editor. And sometimes this changes automatically, so I don't actually have to leave and come back. Other times you have to close out and then come back. Let's quick save and see if we get our new message. Ah, so here's an alert. This is letting us know your discount can't exceed 20%, but I can just cancel out of this and save it anyway, and I can bypass it. So it's more of a warning than something um, that's really going to block the person from moving forward. All right, so how does this work? And what if I wanted to change this from 20% to 16%? Let's go back to our rule. So this rule has all of the umbrella information. If you're used to workflow rules, this is a lot like your workflow rule. And under related, you would have your workflow action, or in this case, we have an error condition. We're gonna open up this error condition and see what it says. All right, so it applies to the rule discount beyond 20%. We're looking at the quote line object and the field we're looking at, the API name for this field, so the name on the back end is SBQQ discount underscore underscore C. If the quote line field, this field, is greater than or equal to the value of 20, then this is going to be true and it will cause the error that's listed on the actual rule. All right, so we're going to edit this and change this to 16. All right, and while we're here, just for the sake of learning, um, this is a dependent field against this. So there's a relatively new thing um, where we can see the dependencies. So in the event that I have quote line, I will have the respective quote line um, fields. And if I choose quote, I will get quote fields and so on. Um, I think some of these don't have any fields actually. But what's really important here is when I was building this out, I had to add a brand new field here. And in order to add this new field, I have to specify that it is specific to the quote line because of this dependency. I have to preserve that dependency. So I want to show you what that looks like um, for the sake of learning. And we change this value to 16. All right, so we'll save that. And our rule, let's make this a validation again. So we'll save that. And now it's gonna change back to that red validation. All right, so if I were to change this to 23 and do a quick save, here we go. We've got that discount cannot exceed 20%. I have to close this, and now I can change it to, let's say, 17, because last time it was 20. Quick save, errors again. Okay, I'm going to close that out, and now I will do 15. Quick save that. All right, perfect. So that is our product rule. Price rules are very different and I will go over one of those as soon as I come up with a good idea for a price rule. Um, I had somebody ask, what's the difference between a product rule and a validation rule? And really you can use either, but best practice is to use a product rule for any validation that happens within the line editor. So when you're configuring different products in here and you want a validation to pop up in this page specifically, um, at that point you should really use a product rule instead of a validation rule. Because if you have other logic that's in place, if you have a very complicated CPQ system, with several price rules and several product rules and discount schedules, there's an order of execution that's going to happen. 
and you wouldn't want a validation rule to trip up one of the other items. Um, so that's really the only reason, one of the only reasons you would use a product rule as a validation product rule instead of a native Salesforce validation rule. All right, so we looked at bundles and we looked at price product rules. I did it again. Um, I think for now that's going to be it. And in the next video, we can take a look at, I'm not entirely sure, but I will put it in the title of the next video. Thank you for watching.